All right, so, so far I used my blocking sketch and then I used uh, type tools in vector.com to customize and come up with finished uh, text blocking and type setting for my spot illustration. So the first two steps, I figured out the, the fonts I want or the typefaces I wanted to, to utilize, and then I modified them to place them into my spot illustration. And now I have the finalized ones. I marked them in red. And then it's simply a matter of bringing them in to my spot illustration, which I can get from assignment seven. So let's see, my most finished one, I might as well do the PSD, which has all the layers. Though it's big. <laughs> And then on the very top, I can drag and drop so they come in as smart objects, my text. And I can enlarge it. place it, but I'm only seeing the A. Which is disappointing. <laughs> so let's see what's going on with that. So you have the vector, the vector is scalable. And it can be opened with the vector program or vector.com but because this is a typeface that's built into the program it needs to have that typeface to be read by other programs so how can we get around that what we can do is simply make it as big a raster file as we can so how do we do that? It's kind of weird. So we have to go and fill it within this workspace. So I select everything. I hold down shift so it all scales and I make it nice and big. And it's in gray just because it's off of the artboard. So what I need to do is make it as big as I can within the artboard. And I can always make the artboard bigger as well. But there is no way within this vector program to export it in a vector format that is not an SVG. And an SVG, we're not able to, to trace each type into a vector. Right? even though we can add shapes to it. So that limits us. We can make it bigger, but basically our best option is to export and not do it as an SVG, but do them as PNG files. And then we get to set our own pixel dimensions. So we would just want to make these over a thousand pixels. Come on. So I'm going to do, let's say 3000 by 3000 pixels. And you say download as a PNG. And as long as your, your image is in the artboard, that will give you a rasterized vector. But you want it really large in the artboard. Otherwise, it's going to be, even at 3,000 pixels, it's going to be really small. So I'm going to enlarge this. 
enlarge it. So it kind of fills that square artboard because those are what it's pixelating. And then I'm going to export it as a PNG. And let's try, because it's a vector, I can put any size I want in here. So let's try 6,000 pixels. Now in principle, this, this gives us all that versatility, right? We have our vector and I want you all to do vector black type, either with vector or with uh, illustrator, which I'll show you next. And that means that we can then output it at any resolution we need. And what we want for this project is print quality resolution. So at least nine by 12 inches by 300 pixels per inch. So now I can take that, that PNG, which I'm gonna move into my folder, right? And I'm going to drop that onto my image. This is my assignment seven spot illustration. And now you can see that it matches, it's big enough for the resolution, whereas before it wasn't. And when I tried to bring it in as just a vector, it only brought in the vector shapes that I drew because, because unlike Adobe, which owns Illustrator and Photoshop, uh, PhotoP and Vector.com are owned by different companies and they don't share the same licenses to fonts or to typefaces. All right, and this will be will perfectly rasterize to the to the image resolution, and because it's a vector, we can always get it cleanly in there. Okay. So that's one. So all of that's kind of a big problem. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and update it. So let's look at how Adobe Illustrator deals with this, which is the more professional program for doing type design. And the first problem is if I open up the SVG we created, in vector.com and I open it up with Illustrator, I don't have the typefaces installed on my computer that vector.com has. Now I probably could find them and download them onto my computer from places like the font, but I might have to pay for some of them. So it's gonna give me this error saying it doesn't know some of these typefaces. And so it tries to place them but it just uses a default typeface. Not great. So what can I do? Well, this is where Defont comes in and loading your own typefaces comes in. So what I can do is, instead of trying to recreate the, work, the wheel, I'm just gonna show you how we would do this if we didn't use vector. So I have loaded those typefaces already. You saw me do that in an earlier video. I downloaded them from Defont, and now I can just type with them. So I wanna get it so you can see all of, of Illustrator in the recording. Let me see. I'll just bring the tools in. 
So you can see at the top, you can adjust the, the point size, just like we were able to do in vector. You can type in your own. Let's make it a little bit bigger here. Let's do 110. And then we can pick the typeface we use. And one that I wanted to play with was Tattoo Museum. And then while they are still in the type tool, you can adjust their sizes individually here, which you couldn't do in vector.com, right? It treated all the text within a block as having the same settings. You can also play with different uh, font options if they're available, like italics or bold individually on the type. You can also select all of it while it's in type, hold down option and use your arrow keys to adjust the kerning, you know, the spacing between the letters. So if I wanted them to kind of flow into each other and you can individually adjust the kerning by holding down option. So if I want to adjust the spacing of the U and the E or of the G and the U, I can individually adjust that and custom typeface or typeset. So it's just kind of all in one step. What I can't do is, is like move the L separate from everything else without making that its own type layer. And so I, I can do that the same way. I can make a new type, I can paste it in, and then I can move it independently. And set it higher, lower, rotate it, you know, that kind of thing. But here is the big factor that's very helpful for professional type design. Once you're done, even though this was generated from a typeface, right? I can right click on it and I can say create outlines in Illustrator. This makes it so the type is no longer editable. So this was before I created outlines. Now I can use it like a word processor. I can you know, change it. But once I say create outlines, by selecting it and then right clicking, now they are vector shapes with independent anchors. And now it is no longer editable type. But what's the great advantage of it being editable vectors? Well, that means that I can augment the actual anchor points of that letter form, right? So I can stretch them. I can change them. I can give my plague L a little crown. I can even redraw the top of it. And I can do little drips coming out of the bottom of it. So you can fully augment and custom customize the type in Illustrator in a way that you can't do in um, vector.com. In vector.com, we had to add shapes on top of and then save as an SVG. All right. And then because we have changed them, I'll just keep playing with it a little bit in little ways. And you can stretch them because they're just vectors now, they're not type. We can make them narrower. We can do little things to warp them or change them up. 